Welcome to the Casual Campers Podcast, your home for the best camping discussion both in and out of the field. Here are your hosts, Tim and Aid. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Casual Campers Podcast. Um, this is uh, this is Tim. And I'm Aid. Yeah. <laughs> you got your chaps on again. <laughs> <laughs> Cold weather, the only chaps I've got is on my lips. You've got men on your lips. <laughs> You've been kissing boys again. You've been kissing them boys. <laughs> For anybody that's just turned in, this is the wrong podcast. This has taken a weird, weird, weird turn. I've had a I've had a right busy day at work. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm... Uh, as, Are we as running on empty? Anything could go uh, on tonight. <laughs> I'm shoving pizza down. You well, re reheated pizza down my neck. I could do with the beer, but that's probably not a good idea. So I've just got a glass of squash. Yeah. Well, sometimes uh, a glass of beer does help. You know. I know. I know. I know. I've just had a week off though, and uh, I I worked out there was one day I didn't have an alcoholic drink, so um. Christmas is coming uh, for those yeah. that you're listening in real time, and uh, you know I need to maybe give my give my liver a break for a few days. Well, yeah, save it up for a few hearty days of partying. Mm-hmm. Merry Crimbo, everybody! Yeah, proper it's... proper Crimbo, as um, Bo Selector would say. Yes. So this week you got... we oh sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, you got uh, over your uh, mountainous walking in the snow. Is it, you know, is it a distant oh. memory now or is it no, still it is, fresh? It is, it is living living with me still, um, mainly because we've we've had a couple of people on um, our uh, uh, Casual Campus podcast group on Facebook uh, have a bit of a chat with us. And I have to say it, Mark Crofts, shout out to Mark Crofts because he says, I am the stuff of legends. And I'm living, uh, I'm riding the crest of that wave for days. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope, Mark, uh, one, you're shopping for tent stoves and tents. Uh, prior to Christmas, who the hell cares? Sometimes <laughs> those are the best gifts that you get, the ones you buy yourself. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think uh, um, Lily was talking to somebody at work and uh, uh, she was telling them about you camping and she was like, what? Camping in this weather? In snow? And it was like, oh no, he's got a tent stove. And they were like, what the hell are you talking about? What were those <laughs> words that you just said? <laughs> and so... And I what are you talking is, about, Willis? <laughs> yeah. Like in North America or you know where you get, you know, you're high up in mountains and you get a lot of snow... People have known about tent stoves for a long time. It's something I didn't know about until about five or six years ago. And mm. then we're like, ooh, this might be something that I, I would try. Um, so, yeah, maybe just uh, it's it's not got to certain people at the moment. but you know. No, well, I've, I've been um, I've been back to work today and, and people have gone, oh, what have you been up to? And I went, oh, well, I went camping in all that snow. And they went, what? And I went, yeah. yeah. And they went, well, you're not freezing? And I went, well, no, I... I have a tent stove, and they and they equally went. What's a tent stove? And you start scrolling through some pictures, and they're just like, "Oh my god, that looks amazing!" I wouldn't mm. want to do it, but it looks looks amazing. It's um, yeah, and it and it's, it's not for everybody, but just no. it, it, honestly, my favorite time of year. I'm going camping this weekend, so I'm I super know. excited. That's cool. I That's don't think cool. I'm going to get the uh, uh, snow because we're in a little valley. Um, but you know, I'm just hoping that it's not raining. But you stay in a little in a little valley, kissing boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's how rumors start. <laughs> If that's uh, what you get off on, that's fine by me. Well, uh, I, yeah, know. you know we're fully inclusive, <laughs> fully, fully inclusive in this in this podcast. I'm just taking the mick out, of my brother. It, um, <laughs> one, one of the one of the things that kind of somebody said to me today, and uh, and actually uh, my mate Tom said to me a few days ago, sent me a message, was um, were you not scared? And what do you do about axe murderers coming up to the the side of the tent in the middle of the night? 
and uh, mm. and it just got me thinking about tent safety and yeah. uh, and and I thought well why don't why don't we I don't know why don't we why don't we chat about about tent safety Say well it, my brother axe axe murderers uh and things it's a it's a real life fear when you're wrapped up in your duvet or your sleeping bag and you hear noises outside it's a real life fear it is I, it is i've yeah. been there um, going like yeah. what if that your imagination can go crazy and that is the thing isn't it you yeah. you know in the back of your head it's just so the wind rustling leaves but actually, in the front of your head, it's a, it's a crazy person just escaped from an asylum with several axes, knives, and they just all they want to do is cut you up into pieces. Yeah. And uh, I have I have been there in uh, in in a tent previously and proper scared. Um, my first solo camping trip. Uh, my, sorry, no, my first wild camping trip. I was there with someone else. We were in separate tents. And I was just lying there thinking, actually, that could be anything. I'm not on a campsite. That could be anything at all. <laughs> it's, it's oh, my God. weird noises that you're just like, what the heck's that? Even animal noises that you go, that sounded like a lion or some monkeys. <laughs> what the heck is that? I'll it's just what, weird stuff that seems to happen at night. in the middle of the night. <laughs> scream like some kind of beast from hell and i have been proper scared of them foxes yeah. foxes screech like some i don't know something's been disemboweled somewhere and it, yeah. it's blooming terrifying yeah um one uh and for me um my first go-to is make sure you've got a hammer an axe or a knife quite close to hand always makes me feel a little bit braver um but then also you know sometimes just getting out of the tent and going to have a look you yeah. know sometimes that calms you down and go oh it's that bit of tarp that's flapping in the wind <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i tend to so you know my camping trip just gone i had my standard stuff so i had my i had my my fire stuff, my wood stuff, and I had my camping box. So collectively, I had two axes, a little tiny hand hatchet thing and a slightly larger axe for chopping logs. Fisker's had... N10? A yes, yes, it is. And a Fisker's X5 as well. Um, <laughs> so, so two axes, Tim. Um, I had... Uh, a couple of knives. So I had a, a, a Mora Eldris neck knife. Uh, I didn't sleep with that while round my neck because that would be silly. But I, I did have a, a little knife. I had my um, uh, little oh gosh, uh, the name of it's just fallen out of my head. My little folding knife with the funny the little French ones. Uh, up and L. Uh, up and L. So I had my little up and L lock knife. Um, and I uh, think I had a bit of a bushcraft knife in my pack in my camping box. So you were tooled up. That's yeah, like one of those yeah. videos where somebody goes, oh, I've got a knife in my boot, and uh, yeah, in the back of my belt, there's one there, and they keep on like just finding more and more. <laughs> I had a, assault I had weapons a, and stuff. I, have, I was I like, oh, have a load you just of, go a load in that little stuff. ledge on the top of the roof. There's another knife in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just just to keep me like balanced, I've got an Uzi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but I I didn't feel scared on my on my camping trip uh, on my solo winter camping trip. But I did have all this of all this stuff. I have to say, the one thing that makes me least scared out of all the stuff i take is just a really good torch mm, <laughs> i have a, a yeah. really good torch or flashlight to our north american buddies um yeah if you take a really good torch turning a light on actually cuts through most fear and that's like a childhood thing you know gosh mm. is there something under the bed um is there something in the wardrobe you be my big brother actually you did hide under the bed on a number of occasions and scare the living crap out of me. You've How come you're still wardrobe. talking to me, Tim? How come I don't you're still know. Talking? I don't know. It was meant in the nicest way, as in I'm going to get a real kick out of this. But <laughs> it was meant in the nicest way. I still it was got meant. In, it was just like this will be funny to me. 
<laughs> yeah, not to Timmy. <laughs> oh but actually turning a light on even as a kid just cut through all that nonsense didn't it so yeah. the the best the best tool you can take certainly in the uk would would be a really decent torch or flashlight um yeah. in in other parts of the world there are predators out there and uh, and not the human kind you know yeah. there there are bears and bobcats and wolves oh, and i mean i've all been terrified of, i think yeah i mean we've watched alone where they're they're literally in some you know roughly built shelter that they've they've put up themselves with a bit of tarp and there is actually a bear out there i mean i yeah. would be properly messing myself if there was that uh, and we saw the the English one, which I still say is, was very tame compared to what the Americans uh, yeah, and the Canadians and the North American people do. Uh, but absolutely, I think one of the English guys uh, said, you think that you're brave until that night time comes and you know it's coming and there's nothing and there's nobody for miles around. He's like, that, that fear just gets you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, so, I I remember one of the earlier American shows where a guy was absolutely terrified of a bear and cold in the middle of the night, and they just went, well, you're going to have to wait till morning because we can't come to you. And he was like, no, 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 <laughs> I am terrified now. There are bears. You have to get me out of here now. And they went, yeah, we, we can't get to you till the morning. There's nothing yeah. we can do. You're just going to have to – they didn't say suck it up, but they were meaning yeah. suck it up. Suck it up. Yeah. Man. It's – um. Yeah. I I don't I, think I could suck it up. <laughs> I uh, I think I would be really really genuinely scared. You you know, parts of the world have, have got proper things to be scared of. I don't think the UK has really got anything. Yeah. Other than other humans and um, yeah. and we uh, I don't know I don't know if you remember certainly the first time I went to the the Big Bang VW Festival. Mm. Um, I think you'd probably gone a year or two before that first time I went and you sort of twisted my arm and said, oh, why don't you come? And uh, and I think that first night, everybody goes big on the first night at a festival. And yeah. we were all completely wasted, as most of the people in, in the campsite were. And um, and loads of people had their tents ransacked by by a group of people who came on site. Yes. And in the middle of the early hours of the night, literally went through loads of people's tents and and yeah. we all had money stolen i had money stolen um simon who was who was uh, uh in my sharing my tent with me he had a load of money stolen it's um i remember some girl on in another group uh woke up with somebody in the tent and uh, yeah, was screaming yeah, and screaming and and that kind of raised the alarm and uh and they and they went and that, that's the thing. That was on a site. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it doesn't have to be. Sometimes, you know, proximity and stuff. That was a festival. They put fences up uh, and bits and pieces. I was going to say, you know, that the more you do it, the less scared you are. Um, mm. And and saying that, I mean, I'm, I'm going wild camping, going with a friend, we do go and walk around the woods by ourselves separately uh, sometimes uh, at night and dark and turn the lights off to get the feel of how pitch black it is. Um, but I, I think the sort of the more nervous time is uh, just as it's getting dark. I walked back mm. to the car once because uh, we hiked in. We didn't think we could get a car down there, so we hiked in and I went back to get something that I'd forgotten um and it was like there were people around the corner i was just seeing things in the dark yeah. and just imagining things as well it was just crazy i was remember it so vividly it was just like things at the corner of your eye that you you go oh what was that oh and it's just you know the the darkness you, you, or something you, your brain plays all sorts of tricks on you it's Part of it is it's playing tricks on you, and part of you is it's doing what it's designed to do. So your your brain's taking in so much visual stuff all the time, yeah. and actually, what yeah. it's trying to do is make patterns up, and and it's it's a it's a pattern recognition buffer essentially, and it's trying to find faces and shapes that it knows. Uh... And when it can't fully like figure out what it is, it goes, yeah, that's a that's a stalker, 
That's an axe murderer. <laughs> That's a clown. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bear. All, all of the above. All of once. the above. <laughs> uh, it, it was just, and I was talking about, I was like, you're used to this. You should be, uh, it should be okay. And yet it, it was just, mm, yeah, crazy. Uh, I got there and back slightly quicker than uh, normal. <laughs> <laughs> that pace was a little bit rushed. And, and was, was that like, last 10, 10 foot, like somebody was going to have their hand on your shoulder. <laughs> so you just went really quick and went, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. it's like that last leap onto onto the bed just in case there's something under the bed getting your feet <laughs> yeah and it was you all along <laughs> <laughs> there's some halloween stories for us next time yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah I, I think the more that you do um and it, it's that thing of uh if you're gonna go wild camping maybe go uh you know don't necessarily go off into the wilderness. Always make sure people know where you are. Yeah, and maybe you know. maybe do a solo camp on a campsite first. On a campsite, yeah. Just build to, to just it. to you know build build up to it. Yeah, don't don't trek out into the wilderness on your own as you as you first you first go at it because actually you might be really scared and it might just put you off it forever and and it really shouldn't because like you said the more. The more you get out there, the the less scared of of stuff you are, and yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, you you do lie there and you can hear all sorts of noises and things, but it is going to be, you know, uh, an animal. It is, you know, it's unlikely, certainly in this country, to be an animal that's going to cause you any harm. Um, mm. I don't personally like any of the creepy crawlies, even in even in the UK. So all of my tents are fully zipped in, lined, yeah, ground yeah. sheets and everything else. And I know, you know, I think you're staying in a one Tigris, aren't you, that that doesn't have a yeah. floor to it. And part of your snow snow peak doesn't have a floor in the living living area. I mm. personally, I, I, I just don't like that because I just don't yeah, like the yeah, creepy yeah, crawlies. Yeah, no. I don't like stuff with loads of legs. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've got to have a, I've got to have a sewn in ground sheet because otherwise I'll just freak out. Yeah, no, I uh, I hear you definitely on on that, and that's kind of why I, I I like the sort of going into the winter season because you just don't get the creepy crawlies in the same way. I and I've realised that I'm better, you know. I don't I don't you know mm. I'm not meticulous about zipping myself back in and you know get getting in and out. I saw a documentary one time of a guy that was walking across Canada. Um, right in the northern kind of things. And he did this little bit of how do you get into your tent without mosquitoes because, you know, really bad mosquitoes mm. up there and stuff in the summer. And he said, this is what you do. He said, so he said, I'm over here. I'm 100 yards away. And then I run like mad <laughs> and, and threw himself <laughs> in the tent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very funny i was like oh like because i wondered like you'd be just eating alive just getting in slowly like we normally oh, do god so. yeah. yeah yeah i mean saying um you know uh the stuff getting in your tent it was weird so my camping trip i've just been on um when i came back from my second hike i was quite warm and uh and it was still a bit of daylight and i got into the tent and didn't zip it up and no yeah. sooner as I'd sat down on, on the camp bed, but a robin flew in the tent and then kind of landed, looked at me, flew around my tent, landed somewhere else, looked at me again, and then went out the door. And I was literally about to sort of text someone and go, you won't believe what's just come in, when a bloody squirrel came in. <laughs> a, squir a squirrel. It didn't come all the way in, but it just it it poked its head. Um, enough to kind of pull like the 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 uh, the 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 unzipped door open a bit. Looked yeah. in, looked around, looked at me, made eye contact with me. Just kind of sat there for a few seconds, and then turned around and, and cleared off. And it was like, what the what the hell? I did yeah. think I think they're probably really hungry, so I went and put a load of trail mix on. Uh, I cleared some ground and put a load of trail mix outside for them because I thought they're gonna. They're going to want some food. That's what they're yeah. looking for because everywhere was covered in snow. But um, um, it did like about what the what the hell? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's uh, something quite scary for me. Animals behaving in a way that they shouldn't. 
<laughs> I was like, well, you know, Ooh, that's weird. <laughs> they were still kind of being animals. They didn't have like a pack of cards or anything like that. They weren't smoking a pipe or anything. <laughs> they didn't want to start playing pool. Or... <laughs> What's those pictures? <laughs> Dogs playing cards and <laughs> squirrels fishing. It's um, yeah. but yeah, they um, it was a bit weird. It was it was like yeah. what what the heck. Uh, and I guess uh, quite special as well because you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was quite cool, and, and I'm sure there's those um, bushcraft listeners going, "Well, I'd have had that squirrel, and I'd have uh, that have been tea, and I'd have I'd have made myself <laughs> a mitten out of it." It's, uh, <laughs> you know, I just kind of let it go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, I think the other thing that uh, so we we've kind of touched on how scary things are and what, what you need to do mm. sleep with some tools. Maybe the, you know, if that calms you down, it has done me in the past. I'm mm-hmm. not being scared every time, the more I've done it, I was like, yeah, just, you know, let it go. Um, but you know, being on site, being off sites, um, be with somebody, maybe, you know, it's all, all those things. And like you say, a light, you know, great yeah. torch that just goes, hello. I, I have poked my head out the door going, hello, hello, and put the light on just to see uh, if yeah. there's somebody there. Um, I mean, you are, if yeah. you are worried about sort of bigger predators, whether that's people or, or larger animals, you can do, you know, like run a bit of guy rope between, you know, further out from your, your camp mm. with some tin cans or something like that on that'll make a bit of proper noise and at least then that that will give you a little bit of warning that there is something there but it'll also invariably scare off whatever's there because the noise of the cans and stuff like that will make them will make them clear off but yeah. um so you can I, give I, yourself a little bit of pre-warning yeah it with a lot alone the uh hey bear you know not startling animals and stuff and be mm. noisy i was like imagine walking in the woods and you've got to think of that um yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would like to go do like a, a North America camping trip, like road trip, go to Yosemite or something. That'd be brilliant. That would be that would be awesome. I have stayed in, um, uh, is it Kings National Park, Sequoia? Um, is it King Sequoia and Kings or mm. somewhere in California anyway? And um, little cabin, and it did have a big sign on it. Um, uh, giving you bear advice because we do have bears and if you leave something in your car that the bear wants the the bear will get in the car so make sure that you bring all the food inside and and mm. you know don't leave anything anything that the bear might come and get it's uh wow. and don't don't go off the trails they were very clear with a from the ranger station they were like stay on the trails don't go off the trails i didn't camp i was just in yeah. this cabin for a few nights but um but yeah, it, do, it does make you think that actually yeah. you're not in Kansas anymore when you leave the UK. There are things that, you know, you're going into their world and uh, and actually, you know, if you get in their way, they will take you out. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of clips on on uh, Instagram uh, about people going up to like bison and and yeah, i was uh, just watching one of them and, and uh, stuff before, like that yeah. and trying to stroke them and then they get chased off it's like these are wild animals yeah you know if we're, if we're talking about keeping yourself safe don't do stupid things you know yeah. it's um and that that comes down to tools as well so if you've got these axes and you've got these knives know what you're doing with them because actually if you are scared in the middle of the night it's going to be really really easy for you to hurt yourself and if yeah. you're out you know miles from 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 any any support or any help you know you you could you know it could be it could be really serious you know if you've fallen on a knife or you cut yourself or or whatever else you know you you could be in a real mess so you've got to you've got to think about what you're doing yeah um so security in other ways you know we have quite a lot of nice stuff Uh, i think there was a question Mm. about what do you do about all those kind of stuff Mm. Yeah, yeah, we do have a lot of really nice stuff. So when you're away from your camp, they, uh, how do you make sure it's all safe? And yeah. I think I'm really trusting. I don't know what you're like, but I'm I'm really trusting of my fellow outdoors people and just think, well, the the camping community and the hiking community, they tend to be really nice, kind people and quite respectful. 
Yeah. And um, I suppose, arguably, yeah, I don't put a padlock on my tent. Anybody could go into it and um, and take a lot of quite expensive equipment out of it if they really wanted to. I don't know. What's your thoughts? Yeah, no, and I, I would say I've always been quite trusting. Um, until this last couple of years, really, I went camping earlier this year and uh, I had, uh, this was in the Nor tent, Coe 7, uh, where I had uh, my friend in one side of the tent, I was in the other, we got tent stove in the thing, and then all my kitchen stuff and my Yeti were just outside and I just didn't get a good night's sleep. I was like, you know, mm. hmm, somebody could quite easily have that off. And I was thinking about, you know, those screwing dog uh, um, points. Uh, oh, like yeah, a, like a ground anchor. The, a ground anchor. And I was like, oh, maybe I should just use some of those. Normally, you know, don't tempt fit, put it in your tent, put it in the car, put it somewhere else. I think when we yeah. were in uh, um, the camper van festival, like we'd leave the kids' bikes out, which everybody did. But I was like, I'd just get a bit paranoid. It's like, you know what? Don't don't create temptation. Put stuff away. Don't sort of uh, make uh, give people temptation because you're going, oh, look what I've got. Oh, I've got all this. And, yeah. You know, sometimes people, people will be people, won't they? Um so, yeah, I, I, think, I try to sort of not keep it on show. I don't think I've ever padlocked my tent because I just think, you know, I'd prefer you to go through the door if you're going to go in. I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, if they're going to go in, don't don't cut the tent. Yeah, just, just, you know. just open it up, please, please. I remember so, uh, a friend said uh, he went to Glastonbury in the good old days where you used to throw people over the fence and stuff. Um, <laughs> and he said he was in a tent where somebody just stuck a knife through it and pulled it down. Uh, and he was like, clear off. And they uh, they just ran off. But you just think, for God's that, sake. That is the stuff of nightmares. I oh, mean, isn't that, it just? That's proper scary. But I yeah. think, I think, as as in life in general, where you throw a load of people in a really concentrated area, there's always going to be there's always going to be arseholes, mm -hmm. and um, there's always that inclination that somebody's gonna, you know, gonna behave like that. And and a festival, I think you're probably less safe than you are out in the wilderness or or even on a campsite. Yeah. And I I probably think about what am I taking dependent on the kind of area I'm going. So whenever when I have done, you know, the few festivals that I have done, when I have done them, I don't take all my stuff. And I do yeah. tend to put everything goes back inside the tent. Yeah. Um if I'm going to a campsite and I'm going with a group of us, I tend to take all my stuff and I'm quite happy to to leave a lot of it out underneath the tarp. Yeah. Um and if it's a campsite that I know really well and actually, you know, most of the people that go there are going to be pretty, pretty chilled out. And even if I'm there on my own or just as a couple, again, I'm, I'm probably going to leave most of it out. But anything, yeah. anything pricey will will come inside the tent. Um, yeah. But then if I if I'm, you know, if, if it's if it's really basic, then I'm probably not taking loads of stuff anyway. Um, you know, I mean, last the, the other weekend. I did fill the car. I mean, somebody else on on Facebook, um, Chris Stringer, um, was kind of laughing, saying he'd, he'd uh, I I must have had a, a more comfortable night than he did, but he uh, he'd struggled to get it all in his backpack because he uh, he just he just takes it all on his back, wow. and uh, and I kind of said, yeah, well, I kind of struggled to get it all in my car, to be honest. <laughs> I, I, took that, I took that much stuff. It's um, who was but that? I knew there wasn't. Sorry, gone. What, what was his name? Chris Stringer. Chris, hats off to you, man. Getting it all on your back and stomping in yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm always impressed by people. Uh, I've got friends that take the mic out of me because I'm more of a car camper and uh, other things. Even this weekend, I, you know, we're driving down. My mate's got a four wheel drive going down this uh, into the valley and striking it up. But yeah. Each to their own, and uh, I suppose the aim is getting out there, isn't it? Yeah, and I, su I suppose if you if you are taking it all on on your back, 
you kind of you you're setting it up when you get there you're using mm. it and then in the morning you're packing it all up in in your pack again you're taking it so that's the the ultimate secure of all your kit isn't it i suppose yeah. it's the fact that yeah. you you're literally going to carry it around i went on two hikes and left everything in my tent i have to say i did although i was on a site there there weren't a lot of people there the field i was in there was nobody i did put my tent out the way yeah so it was it was blocked by some trees and partly to give me a bit of a bit of shelter because I knew there was going to be some wind and and the weather was going to come in. Um, but it did, you know, from the road, I was kind of blocked by the trees and my yeah. own car. So yes, you could kind of see that someone was there, but you couldn't see how awesome my setup was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen like, pictures. It did look awesome. But that, that's the thing. I mean, you know, don't put stuff on show, pack it away, lock up your tent. Uh, or, you know, I've even sometimes just used a stake to mm-hmm. uh, go through the zips and just stick it out so that it just wouldn't be easy if anybody walked uh, past. Yeah. But I've got more space than I need now. I uh, will, um, you know, from time to time uh, just take my small tent I think I'm always going to take a cooler and it's just then deciding does it stay out because yeah. it's it's on wheels is my uh, it's a big yeti cooler and it's on wheels mm-hmm. and I just think yeah it's easy to wheel off mind you though it'd make a noise yeah. um but and you'd, you'd, you'd probably follow the tracks <laughs> follow the tracks <laughs> follow the tracks <laughs> hunt them down with axes <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I only took a little um I didn't take my big Stanley cooler because it was going to be that cold. I literally yeah. just wanted someone to put some some bacon, some steak, and some some milk in. So I just took my little um, uh, like soft uh, Coleman uh, yep. cooler with me, yeah. and it and it it lived nearest the door, furthest away from. It was still inside the tent, but it was furthest away from the stove, and uh, and right next to the outer wall. So it it stayed sort of cold, but. Um, I still kept it inside. I didn't leave any any kit at all outside. It, um, yeah. I just thought, yeah, I'm taking all this stuff. I'm having it all in inside. Even my boots came in on a mat at night because yeah. I didn't want to leave anything out. Because you do, you do have to think. You know, is someone going to come along? And somebody had walked around my tent at one point. So there were footprints mm-hmm. around it that weren't mine. And uh, so somebody had been and had a look. And uh, yeah. it does does just make you think. Yeah, just just need to be sensible, you know. Don't um, yeah, don't yeah. be too trusty. Oh, yeah, yeah I, th- I think that's the thing, isn't it? You know, we don't want anybody to. It, it's obviously, you know, we've gone through it. That fear of oh, uh, right, and by myself. Uh, so there's some people that have been doing this for years and going, "What are you guys talking about, man?" <laughs> yeah, and there are others <laughs> that you know completely just put themselves off. But there are things about you know just trust. Just start to think, uh, do it on a small basis. Go to a, a campsite by yourself. Um, you know what you what you're doing when you're there, um, and then you know branch out into wild camping. You love mm-hmm. it. I always remember last year we went uh, walk. No, it might have been the year before. Actually, we went uh, doing the coastal path in Pembrokeshire, mm. and it was coming to early evening. And there was a woman just. Uh, it was in some woods, just on the coast path, and uh, just off the path, she just set up camp. Um, cool. And I, I was like, "Wow, it's." It was all quite overgrown, and it and she was just and we walked straight past her, and I thought, yeah, that'd really scare me quite a lot, to be honest. So I was just I was well impressed at her bravery, mm. and she's obviously doing that around the coast. So yeah, that is really cool. That is that's seriously it, cool. But it, it was the proximity to the path that sort of got me, and I thought I'd I'd be a bit further away because if I thought. If it was dark and I heard something on the path, I'd be like, nah. "Well, you'd That's you'd be convinced." Scared. Well, yeah, you'd be you'd be convinced. I'd be convinced it was a person walking down the path, um, yeah. which it might well have been. And then, then if you kind of go, "Oi!" and they go, "What? <laughs> what are you going to do?" <laughs> <laughs> my axe and my shotgun. <laughs> Talk uh, tough, eh? Talk tough. That's what I'd do. 
I've got a real Jack Russell complex. Talk to him. Bark lots. Don't show them that you're scared. Even though you sound scared. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it all in a really high-pitched voice, by the way. <laughs> There's three of us here. <laughs> It is just getting out there, isn't it? Yeah. Get out it there. Is. Try, out try there. and, uh, you know. As with anything in life, you get more confident the more you do anything at all. And uh, and you, as long as you do it with a bit of a big slice of common sense, I, I think you'll stay safe. So in answer to to the safety comments, I think, uh, I think we've covered that one. All right, I think so. I think we have. I think we have. It is. Um, it's it's approaching Crimbo, and uh, you're camping next next weekend, which is which is awesome, just before mm. Christmas. And yes. um, are you all set for it? I am really. Um. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I think so. I think we're. Um, it rained a lot this weekend, so I was thinking about it. Going, oh, I hope it's not boggy or or anything like that. Yeah, um, but you're not taking your tent. but it's a funny thing because i'm so i'm precious about mine which i think is why uh my mate chris has got his tent um uh and because he loves uh getting tents and stuff like that but i uh, yeah i also want to make sure that i look after somebody else's tent yeah Um, i'm only i'm only taking the mic i'm only taking oh i know you know you don't want want anybody's stuff to get to get muddy and and oh no so so yeah it's that it's that sort of be be precious with somebody else's stuff so i yeah just hope um yeah, I, I'm just so looking forward to it. A good cool. catch up because this is mainly what we do uh, uh, with my mate Chris. So shout out to Chris. Looking forward to uh, catching up, buddy. Cool. Get your chaps on because Eddie's going to want to do some chap warming up of his lips. <laughs> <laughs> There will be no photos on Instagram or the Facebook group. <laughs> Sorry. Jack lips. Look, we've got some Vaseline. <laughs> some lip sol. Whatever it is. Oh, God. Oh, dear. All right. Well, you know, I look forward to hearing all about it uh, when yep. you come back. And obviously, stay safe and don't we'll do anything do. daft. And, uh, you know... I uh, I suppose we better clear off. Well, I was just going to, uh, in the last uh, few seconds before it kicks us out, I was going to say, uh, once again, uh, we're on Instagram. We are on Facebook. Search us out. Uh, tap the subscribe. Uh, ask us some questions. Tell us some stories. What scared you the most? What do you think of when you hear noises in the middle of the night? We'd love to hear from you. Uh, a bit of interaction always goes down. Anybody that does, we promise we'll give a shout out. Uh, absolutely. I always forget to do the social stuff. But um, uh, as always, we'll leave you with a, a minute mindfulness. And uh, I'll catch you next time. I've been Tim. I've been Aid. Catch you on the flip. Welcome to the Casual Campers One Minute Mindfulness, but is it rain, fire or sizzling sausages? You decide.